This is uh, Steve Hiro, a volunteer researcher with the OWL uh, Research Institute. And I'd like to share a video that we made this year during a pygmy owl breeding season. Um, despite the fact that we've had um, upwards of 60 uh, pygmy owl nests that we've found and monitored through the years, we've had surprisingly little experience with the actual fledging, witnessing the actual fledging. And so um, we're hoping that this video will add a lot to uh, what we already know uh, about the pygmy breeding season. Um, the pygmies lay their eggs in um, mid-April. They hatch in mid-May and uh, they start fledging in mid-June. Um, prior to fledging, the chicks will start looking out about a week prior to their actual leaving the cavity. This is a picture of an adult pygmy owl that we uh, captured a number of years ago um, to band it. Um, gives you some idea of the size of an adult. Uh, pretty small, um, about six to seven inches in length and a weight of around 70 to 90 grams. And uh, the next picture is uh, an adult looking out of a, ca a nest cavity. Uh, I put this here mostly to show the size of the cavity opening, which is very small and allows uh, the um, adults and chicks to feel protected from predation uh, because of the size of the opening. So now we begin the video, and actually this is um, shot the day before the chicks fledged. It gives you some idea how uh, anxious and curious they are. Uh, this is a little bit unique in that we don't, we don't usually see two uh, chicks looking out at the same time, but um, they're anxious to get going and uh, they'll get at it the next day. So this is um, day one. Um, the camera that we were able to use has the ability um, to uh, use infrared light. And so a lot of the shots or some of the shots were shot in the dark. That was the female leaving the cavity first thing in the morning. She usually leaves um, after roosting there overnight. She just brought some prey back in to the chicks. All the chicks are in the cavity. So she brought prey in and just left. Now the next, next uh, shot will have the female come in. Uh, she has prey, but this time doesn't deliver it, is vocalizing from the branch near. Uh, the chicks will um, realize that she's not going to bring the food in, and it becomes a, an incentive for them to leave. Uh, they already have the curiosity. Now they have an incentive of no food. This is, a, again, an adult bringing food in. This time, uh, since there are still chicks, in the cavity, she feeds them, so she brings the prey in and um, leaves uh, having fed the chicks or having left the food in there. There she goes. This is um, the actual um, departure of the first chick. So it's um, about maybe eight o'clock in the morning. Um, this chick chooses to leave the cavity by climbing. Uh, we've experienced all kinds of departures. Uh, we've had chicks come out and hop onto a branch nearby. Uh, much like a branching in other owl species. Uh, we've had owls do this, where they uh, flap their wings, but they mostly climb. And uh, 
eventually this uh, chick will get to a point where it'll be closer to a branch. We'll get on the branch. But um, th these chicks can fly very early. Um, some of them fly right from the cavity. Uh, if they don't fly right from the cavity, they'll get on a branch and fly within uh, minutes to hours. And they can fly good distances, as we'll see with uh, subsequent video. Um, you can see the second chick looking out, or a second chick looking out uh, of the cavity at the same time. And this uh, first one is getting up towards the branches where it'll be a little bit more secure. Uh, this is a cottonwood tree that the nest was in this year. And so the texture of the bark on the cottonwood tree probably um, adds quite a bit to um, the chick's stability as it's climbing. This is the second chick. It, this is actually in the afternoon. So the first chick left around eight. This is um, afternoon, like maybe one or two or so. And uh, this chick chooses to do the same thing, uh, leaves the cavity and chooses to climb as well. Whether it saw its sibling do that or whether um, it's just the easiest way to go. But as I said before, we've had uh, chicks leave in multiple modes. They can fly right from the cavity. They can hop on an adjacent branch. We've even had them drop down to the ground, stay on the ground for a very short period of time. But they can fly fairly quickly. And so they're quite mobile. And they don't go through that long period of branching that other owl species go in have where they um, they branch for a number of weeks before they can fly well. This is a third chick um, looking out. Um, you get a sense of the size of the cavity. It's pretty small and protective, as we said. So the first day, uh, two chicks left. Um, early in the morning on the second day, it's still less than 24 hours from the first chick leaving, um, the uh, third chick uh, leaves. And this one leaves by flying directly from the cavity. It flies upwards, but misses the branch and falls quite a ways. Um, I'm not sure whether it fell all the way to the ground or whether it uh, landed on a lower branch, but it misses the branch it was shooting for and falls down, but does not get hurt. And eventually, uh, very quickly, within the next hour or two, is up in the top canopy uh, flying around with its siblings. Uh, this is another adult food delivery. Um, this time, sometimes the f the female or, or an adult will leave food, or sometimes it won't. Sometimes it will tease them and lure them out. That particular one, the um, female left the, the prey in the cavity. This is the fourth chick leaving. It flies directly up. This is a slow motion video of that. So how do they do that? They're in a cavity for the last four weeks with five siblings and, and periodically the, the uh, female adult. How do they have space to test their wings and learn to fly? It's a mystery that we still don't understand. They've never been outside a cavity and can fly upwards. This is a, uh, an ad another adult there delivering food again. Because there's still another couple chicks in the um, cavity, so they still they actually have to be fed as well. So this is the third the the fourth chick that's up 
on that branch. And you can see this is within minutes after they're out of the cavity. It's already flying four or five feet over to another branch on the left there of the screen while the female is looking and she just comes out of the cavity to join the fourth chick. We, we put this in the video because it's a curious thing of a, the adult defending the nest cavity from the red squirrel that's uh, just curious. The red squirrels are never, uh, never get in there. They don't pre predate. Um, they can't, usually can't get in the cavity, but this female comes over and covers the cavity, which is a, a unique um, vi visual for us. And that's the fifth chick finally came out and again flew directly up uh, to a branch high above. We put this in the video um, because this is a, a demonstration of an adult uh, doing the um, food um, delivery chitter. So here's a probably a female, has a bird in its talons, and uh, has five uh, chicks out on the canopy, another chick in the, cav in the cavity, and she has some food that she's gonna deliver to somebody. And this is a, a chitter, you can see her tail vibrate, um, and she's vocalizing to, that she has some food availability. You can also see the false eyes on the back of her head, um, which is um, a topic for another video and conversation. This is the um, sixth chick. This chick was reluctant, as sometimes they are. Um, the last chick sometimes is a bit of a runt or just reluctant. This was the afternoon of the second day. I thought it was leaving right there. Uh, and then it got its wing out, uh, but got went back in. I was concerned that maybe the right wing was uh, hurt or damaged, and that was why it wasn't leaving the cavity, but it turns out uh, it was just a reluctant chick. So looking out and curious, but not taking the bait from the mom to uh, leave the cavity. This is later in the day. Uh, same chick, but not ready to leave just yet. So now we're on uh, day three, but it's actually um, about 48 hours after the first chick left. So the first five left within 22 hours, and then um, the last one is still in the cavity. We'll see it. Again, this is infrared. The mom comes in with uh, food, but doesn't deliver to the chick. Um, and again, that's a stimulus perhaps to get this reluctant chick out of the cavity. Here it's almost out. It's probably a little bit too dark. The chicks tend to fledge during the day. Uh, so not quite ready. This is the mom with a little bit of food, probably a piece of food that's left over from the other five chicks that are eating out on, outside. So she comes in and has a little bit of food there and maybe gives it to him, him or her. And then she comes in again with a bird and goes in, but this does not give the food that time and comes out and again, probably vocalizes to remind the chick, the last reluctant chick, that that's not where he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be out among the branches and leaves. And that's how you learn to be a pygmy owl. So you can see there the, the adult with them. And then finally he gets the, gets the deal, gets the clue and um, flies up and that's, six chicks leaving. Um, throughout the video, 
a um, couple things have been obvious. The chicks all look the same, and they all act pretty much the same, other than the reluctant one. And that um, brings up an important point when it comes to pygmy owls breeding, and that is the notion of synchronicity. Um, the, the female doesn't incubate her eggs until all the eggs are laid. And so that um, allows the eggs to hatch at the same time. It allows uh, the plumage development to occur at the same time. And it allows the chicks to fledge relatively synchronously. Um, and it's an important difference from most of the other uh, owls of North America. I'd like to take a minute to acknowledge and thank Dan and Drake Ballard, who arrived uh, from Austin, Texas, uh, with this most amazing camera, but more importantly, with this most amazing camera knowledge and computer knowledge that um, made this video possible. They also were involved in the field with the short-eared owls uh, with a unique camera as well. And hopefully we get some video from that that we can add to the website. So thank you, Dan and Drake.